There's been a lot of buzz lately around a new type of solar battery developed in Germany. But this isn't your typical solar panel with an external battery. This new material does something remarkable. It captures sunlight, stores the energy, and releases it hours later even after sunset. And it does all of that in a single compact structure without needing a separate battery system. Researchers say this breakthrough could outperform every similar material tested before it both in terms of energy storage and durability. So how exactly does it work? What's the science behind it? And could this new material one day power our homes and devices more efficiently than anything we've seen so far? Let's break it down. We already know that renewable energy is a major part of the global energy transition, and solar power plays a central role. In Germany, by 2024, solar electricity made up around 14.7% of total gross power generation, and that number keeps climbing every year. But the biggest challenge is just as well known. Solar panels don't produce energy at night. And during the day when panels generate more power than needed, we're still not good at storing the surplus. That mismatch between production and demand is exactly why energy storage systems are so critical. And now, a research team based in Munich and Stuttgart has come up with a new material that could solve that problem in a radical new way. They call it NDICOF. It's an organic material that captures sunlight, converts it into electrical energy, and stores that energy all in one single substance. No separate battery. No external storage system. Just one smart material doing it all. Let's unpack the name first. NDI stands for naphthalenodiamide, a synthetic molecule that's become increasingly important in energy research. It acts like an electron reservoir, absorbing and holding on to electrical charge. The COF part stands for Covalent Organic Framework. Think of it like a super fine, porous net made entirely from carbon-based compounds. These structures are both porous and crystalline, meaning they're full of tiny holes and are arranged in a very regular, repeating pattern, sort of like sugar crystals under a microscope. In fact, under an electron microscope, the NDICOF material looks like stacked hexagonal rings. These layers build up into a 2D sheet-like structure, giving it a massive internal surface area. And because of the pores, energy can easily move through all those layers. Imagine a sponge full of tunnels, each one leading deeper into a network of energy storage. That's what makes this material so exciting. It has the perfect internal architecture for both capturing and storing energy efficiently. Now before we go any deeper, let's explain how traditional solar cells work, so we can compare. In a regular silicon solar panel, you have two semiconductor layers. Where they meet, an electric field is created, known as a depletion zone. When sunlight, specifically photons, hits that zone, it knocks electrons loose from their atoms, creating what's called an electron-hole pair. The free electrons flow into an external circuit, generating usable electricity. The holes stay behind in the material, waiting to recombine with electrons again if they don't get swept away fast enough. This is the basic photovoltaic effect, and it's how almost every solar panel on Earth works today. But in NDICOF, things happen a little differently. Yes, it still absorbs sunlight, but instead of sending those electrons straight into an external circuit, it traps them inside the material itself, like a built-in energy bank. And here's where it gets even more clever. To help the material trap electrons without them recombining with holes too quickly, researchers added a molecule called 4-methylbenzyl alcohol, or 4-MBA. Think of it as an electron donor. Its job is to fill in the positive holes left behind by the ejected electrons, allowing the freed electrons to remain stable and stored inside the material for extended periods. This process creates what's known as a radical species, a molecule with an unpaired electron. Normally, radicals are unstable, but in the structured network of NDI-CoF, these electrons can stay locked in place for over 48 hours, as long as the environment is oxygen-free. That means you could charge the material during the day and release the stored energy on demand at night without needing an external battery. And here's a fun detail. When the material absorbs light and stores energy, its color changes from yellow to brown. So you can literally see when it's charged. This leads us to a very cool concept in energy storage science, pseudo-capacitance. There are two common types of energy storage, capacitors and batteries. 
Capacitors charge and discharge quickly, but they don't hold much energy. Batteries, on the other hand, can store large amounts of energy but take longer to charge. Pseudo-capacitive materials like NDICOF combine the best of both worlds. They store energy through chemical reactions at the surface, like a battery, but without needing deep penetration into the material. That means fast charging and discharging with high energy density. Now, how well does NDICOF perform in tests? Researchers measured a specific capacity of about 38 milliamer hours per gram, or 166 coulombs. That's significantly higher than other light-sensitive materials used for energy storage, including carbon nitrides, metal organic frameworks, and metal oxides. To put that into perspective, graphite anodes used in lithium-ion batteries have a theoretical capacity of about 360 milliamp hours per gram. So while NDI-CoF doesn't beat lithium-ion batteries yet, it holds its own as a self-contained energy capturing material. They also tested how stable the material is over time. After 12 hours, it retained 72% of its stored charge. And after 30 charge-discharge cycles, it still had 82% of its original capacity. That's not on par with commercial batteries. But again, this is one integrated material, still early in development, and already showing very promising performance. However, there's one big limitation. Efficiency. Specifically, the solar-to-energy output efficiency of NDICOF is very low. The material is most efficient when absorbing ultraviolet light around 365 to 405 nanometers in wavelength. That's a small slice of the total solar spectrum. If you only count the UV portion, the material converts about 0.012% of that energy into stored charge. And across the full spectrum of sunlight, the efficiency drops to just 0.002%. That's incredibly low for practical use, but that doesn't mean it's useless, just that it's still a research stage material. The fact that it can absorb light, store electrons, and release energy, all in one organic compound, is a massive breakthrough on its own. In the future, researchers hope to improve the structure and chemistry of NDICOF to capture a broader range of light and increase both storage capacity and charge-discharge efficiency. Another important point, Unlike lithium-ion batteries, NDICOF contains no heavy metals, no rare earths, and is fully organic. That means it could be cheaper, lighter, and more environmentally friendly once scaled up. So, is this material ready to replace traditional solar panels and battery banks? Not yet, but it offers an exciting look at what next-generation solar materials could become. Think ultra-thin, flexible panels that not only generate electricity but store it internally. Devices that can run for hours after sunset without needing a bulky external battery. Solar-powered wearables, sensors, or even buildings that self-regulate their power needs with smart materials like this. It's also a great example of how organic chemistry, nanostructure engineering, and energy science are coming together to redefine what we think is possible in renewable technology. Even though its current efficiency is too low for commercial use, the ability to combine energy harvesting and storage in a single substance is revolutionary. And that's why the research community is so excited. So what do you think? Is this kind of material the future of solar energy? Or do you think it's better to keep using traditional solar panels paired with high-capacity batteries or even hydrogen storage? And let me know your thoughts. And if you're curious about alternative solar energy systems, there's another project in Belgium using solar panels to produce hydrogen directly. We've already covered that in a separate deep dive. Until then, keep an eye on the science because even low-efficiency prototypes like this are often the first step toward world-changing tech.